Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for uh, spending a few moments with us. Uh, this is Lunchtime with the Lord. This is Friday's edition, and we've made it to the end of another week, and praise the Lord. Uh, if you're at work, you probably are rejoicing, and uh, if this is your last day of work for the week, uh, it's something to, to be thankful for, isn't it? And uh, we've made it to another end of another week, and, and looking forward to the weekend. I hope you'll be with us this coming Sunday uh, for Sunday services as we worship the Lord uh, Jesus, uh, this Lord's Day, uh, we have 10 o'clock Sunday school and uh, 11 o'clock morning worship and 6 o'clock evening worship. And I hope you'll, hope you'll choose to be with us this coming Sunday. And I'm um, looking forward to preaching, looking forward to uh, seeing in each, each and every one of you and also uh, worshiping the Savior, uplifting Jesus Christ. And uh, so hopefully you'll be with us this coming Sunday. God's given us a beautiful day today. Uh, the sun is shining, and uh, we're rejoicing in God's goodness today. And I'm thankful that you're joining us today. And First Thessalonians chapter four is where we have spent uh, the last uh, few meetings together, few of these devotions, as we began a new chapter uh, a couple days ago. And uh, we are currently in verse, starting with verse number five. And uh, if you have watched the last couple of these devotions, you will know that chapter number four, Paul begins to address uh, uh, sin, talking about fornication, talking about immorality, uh, and how we should have a walk that's uh, pleasing to God, and uh, that it was that it was God's will. And so yesterday we talked a little bit about how fornication or this immorality was against some things. It's against God's will, as he as he said. In, uh, in verse number three, and uh, it was against God's word. God, God's word uh, warned us about this. It warns us not just here, but other places. And it was against uh, the walk for God, that a walk that would be pleasing, as verse number one talked about. And so uh, we talked about a few things. We talked about the wisdom of God, how it's God, against God's wisdom, as he said that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. And so today, as we get to number, uh, verse number five, we find that Paul is still addressing this topic, this topic about immorality. And remember, primarily, he's writing to Christians, this church at Thessalonica. We understand the world has an immoral problem. There's immorality all around us. We understand, as we talked about the last uh, day or so, that the world and society uh, not only participate and practice immorality, but they uh, project it as something that's normal and uh, something that's celebrated. And uh, as we find here and other places in Scripture, we find not only is it, it not normal, but it shouldn't be celebrated, but God condemns it. And so the primary application of chapter number four about this immorality is not just toward the world. Yes, there's an immor immorality, there's an immoral uh, problem, immorality problem in our world and society. When I say world, I'm talking about those that do not know Christ as their Savior. But the primary application here is to us believers. He's writing to a church at Thessalonica and warning them about this uh, this immorality problem. And and so. With that in mind, let's read verse 5 and verse number 6 as it, he continues uh, this subject about immorality. In verse 5, it says, Not in the lust of uh, concupiscence, even as the Gentiles which know not God. A couple things about that verse. First, there's two words in that are very close in meaning. The word lust, I believe we all understand what that word means. Uh, there's no hidden meaning in the Greek uh, word that's translated our word lust. It, it means lust. It means this this desire, deep desire, usually attributed to some sexual desire as it is here because he's been talking about fornication and immorality. And the word concupiscence is, is a very similar word to that word lust. It means a deep desire, passion. And so he's talking about this, this fleshly appetite uh, that uh, needs to be controlled um, Immorality and the the and uh, this this sin of immorality, and notice he says even as the Gentiles which know not God, 
And he's pointing to unbelievers. He's pointing to people that do not know God. And he says, even as that is something there. And we've talked about that, as I mentioned over the last couple of days, about how uh, society, those unbelievers, those that do not know Christ as their Savior, this is the norm. This is upheld. This is uh, this is glorified. This is this is uh, celebrated. And Paul here says this type of lust, uh, as as it was in the Gentiles, which know not God. And then verse six, he says that no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any matter, because that the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we have all, as we also have forewarned you and testified. A couple things about this verse. First, we find that uh, Paul says that no man be uh, go beyond and defraud the brother. Now, what's he talking about? Uh, well, in the context, remember what he's been he's been speaking about. He's been speaking about fornication and morality, and and so he's not switching subjects here about defrauding someone, you know, in a business transaction. Which, by the way, we Christians ought to be honest and in uh, in all of our dealings with other people. That's not, but it's not the what he's talking about. He's pointing out how immorality. There's a deceitful, uh, there's a defrauding aspect to that sin, as there is with most sin. Sin is deceitful. Sin promises one thing, delivers something else. And he's showing us here that uh, that immorality defrauds someone. It cheats someone. An example, immorality will cheat this other spouse, will it not? Uh, immorality will cheat maybe the future spouse, the person uh, that the, uh, the the person that's uh, that's engaged in that is going to marry in the future, and so uh, there's this uh, there's this defrauding aspect of it. He said that this this sin defrauds someone, it 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 cheats someone, it it slights someone, and by the way, sin does that. Sin is deceitful. Uh, it promises one thing, delivers something else. Uh, Satan's very good at packaging it. Satan's very good at advertising it. Satan's very good at promoting it to be something that it's not. And uh, we find as humans, if we'll be truthful as we look back, uh, sin leaves us empty. It doesn't, it doesn't fulfill what it promised. And uh, it may have been packaged pretty. It may have looked great. But in the end, we're always disappointed with what it truly delivered because it delivered something different than what it promised. It promises life. But in fact, it delivers death. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. And so we have to be very careful about how Satan packages things and promotes it and puts it on display for us and uh, humans. And Paul's pointing out here, there's a, there's this defrauding aspect of, of this, this type of lust, this fornication, this, um, this immorality. Someone's cheated. Uh, someone's defrauded. And he goes on and says, he talks about the Lord is the avenger of all such. And that word avenger is a strong word. But it reminds us that this sin is not just against someone else. If, if, if a man and a wife are married and uh, the husband or the wife, either one, uh, gets caught up in this immorality, uh, yes, it's a sin against the other. Uh, it's a sin against the, the, the uh, partner, the, the spouse. But ultimately, it's a sin against God. And, and we see that God condemns it. He condemns it strongly. Not only does he condemn it strongly, he uses the word avenger. He's the avenger. He's going to deal with it. And he's going to deal with this type of sin, and uh, as he will with all sin. And it, that word avenger reminds us who the sin is against, ultimately. It's a sin against God. And he goes on and says this, as we also have forewarned you and testified. Paul said, we've warned you about this. You've heard it. Uh, we warned you about this sin. We warned you about this immorality. We warned you about the, the consequences of all this. And uh, he, he's cautioning them. And you know, the truth of the matter is the Bible gives us great, uh, some wonderful warnings through life. And all that we, if we would heed these different warnings, not just to do with this sin, but other, other things that God says, uh, this is as far as I want you to go. This is the boundary. Don't go past this. And if you go past this, there's, there's some consequences that, that can happen. Um, if we would heed those warnings, we would, it, we would save ourselves so much headache and so much heartache in our lives. The Bible has warnings for reason. Why? Because he's the ultimate all-wise God, and he understands and knows how, the best for our life. And it's important, uh, as we go through the Word of God, 
that we, that we uh, as we study it, that we would read it and heed to these things. Now, there's a lot of folks that don't want to, don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear any warnings. You're just meddling. You're just, it's none of your business. You know what? It's none of my business, but it's God's business. And, um, and as we teach and preach through the Bible and we come to a passage like this, and uh, if someone was involved in this type of sin, they may think that, oh, they're just meddling, it's none of their business. What do they know? Well, I don't know much, but I do know God knows everything. And he says he's warning us against it, and we have to heed to it. There's warnings there. Paul, our job as Christians, our job as teachers or preachers, is to preach the word as it's there and declare it as truth, as absolute truth, and not to water it down. And uh, Paul did not water it down, this warning uh, for the Thessalonians, he said, we, we told you, we warned you, we forewarned you, we testified of this. Uh, we didn't just give you a, a message of, you know, the Bible warns us in the, in the last days, though, um, they'll not endure sound doctrine, uh, but they'll heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. In other words, they want to, they want to hear a, a message that makes them feel good. And, you know, uh, in the last days, they they'll do, they're going to do this. I I believe you know we see a lot of that today. Um, people in our world do not want to hear a, a Bible message, and and sometimes the Bible message from the Word of God. There's warnings there, and uh, folks will say we well, are just being judgmental and says no. We're there's as Paul said here. We forewarned you about this. We testified of this. This is what God says about this, and uh, there's consequences uh, to do uh, that comes with this, as we'll see. Uh, tomorrow when he, when he, uh, or I'm sorry, Monday, uh, Lord willing, um, as he, as he continues, uh, to, to, uh, proclaim and, and, uh, uh, this, about this truth of, uh, as the Bible tells us in verse number seven, we'll get to this Monday. He not called us to uncleanliness, but unto holiness. And so there's a great, uh, contrast here. Those that are involved in the sin, they can't, they can't live a holy life. And so Paul said, we warned you about this. And sometimes the warnings that God gives us in our life, we don't want to hear them, we don't want to listen. It's kind of much like, it's much like we were when we were kids, remember? Our parents may give us a warning, you know, don't, you know, if you go out there, you're going to, if you do this, you're going to get hurt. You know, if you, you continue to do that, you got to be careful. Uh, it's going to bring some consequences. And we thought we knew better. And there's times that we made a mistake and we realized that our parents were right. And, uh, and we got hurt on whatever it was. And perhaps we learned from it. Perhaps we were hard-headed and we had to do it again and again and again to figure out that, hey, they, they have some wisdom that we don't have at our age. How much more does God have wisdom than even our parents? You may have had a great parents like I did, uh, but how much more does wisdom does God have than anybody in this world? And yet we think as humans that we know best for our lives, that we got it all figured out, that uh, the way we want to live is the way the way it should be and the way it, the best for our lives. God has some parameters. God has some some boundaries uh, for the humans uh, for human beings, and it's not because He's being mean. It's because He knows best, and He's warning us about this this uh, sin of uh, fornication, this sin of immorality, and uh, immorality can be wrapped up a lot of different sins in that. But He's warning us: don't be like the believer uh, Gentiles that are unbelievers. He said, we, man, we for, Paul said, we forewarned you. We testified of this because God's an avenger. It reminds us that it's just not a sin against someone else. It's a sin ultimately against God. Hey, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day today. And hey, when, God, when we're reading through the Bible, we see warnings. They're there for a reason. Uh, God in his wisdom has placed them there as to get our attention, to remind us that, hey, there's some things that we may want to abstain from. There's some things that we may want to stay away from because sin packages itself, Satan's great at this, as something that it's not, that it'll produce something that it's wonderful, but in truth it produces something that was terrible, that'll rip our families apart, break our hearts, and all these things ruin our lives. And so we have to be very careful. The warnings are there for a reason. And uh, let's heed to them. Let's not be like we were when we were kids and have to take two or three times uh, of, of uh, learning by uh, the school of hard knocks you know, over and over, uh, messing up and realizing finally, oh, wait a minute, uh, this is not working. Let's heed the warning and save ourselves some heartache. And that's what Paul said. We warned you. We forewarned you. And uh, we testified of this. Hey, I hope you have a wonderful, we're out of time. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your Day today on Friday. I hope to see you this coming Sunday on this uh, on uh, on the Lord's Day this coming Sunday. God bless you. Have a great Friday.